Hi, welcome back to IU Radiology Case of the Day. My name is Nick Kuntz, and I'm a neuroradiologist and head and neck imager at Indiana University School of Medicine. It's been a little while, but I'm back with another interesting head and neck case. So as always, I'd like to start out by saying that all of the educational content found as part of this presentation has been completely de-identified to protect patient privacy. So the history in this case is a patient who had a long-standing right-sided conductive hearing loss. So we have two images for you to take a look at. The image on screen left is from the patient's right side. It's an axial non-contrast temporal bone CT. The image on screen right is from the patient's left. Again, an axial non-contrast temporal bone CT image. So take a look at those images. Keep in mind that clinical history. This is a patient with long-standing right-sided conductive hearing loss and try to figure out what's going on here. Okay, so what is the most likely diagnosis and what additional past medical history has this patient almost certainly had? Okay, let's take a look at the imaging. First up, we're looking at the patient's right side. So this is the abnormal side. This is the side that they have the conductive hearing loss. So whenever you look at this, perhaps at first nothing really jumps out as abnormal. And that's okay. That happens a lot, actually, when you're looking at temporal bone CTs. But one thing that I like to do is just think globally. What, what do you make of this temporal bone? Does it look normal? Does it look like globally, globally something is going on here? Well, this patient has an under-pneumatized and sclerotic appearance of their mastoid, as you can see denoted here by the yellow arrow. This mastoid is really dense, it's sclerotic, it's poorly pneumatized. When you see that appearance, be thinking about a patient who has chronic otomastoiditis. So, that doesn't really explain why they have the hearing loss in and of itself, but it may be a contributing factor. So why does this patient have conductive hearing loss? Well, take a look at the ossicular chain. In this case, the ossicular chain, we see the the long process of the malleus, the long process down into the lenticular process of the incus, and we're seeing the anterior and posterior crura of the stapes. When you look at this ossicular chain, it's too dense. And in fact, that density has a bit of a studded appearance. So look at the anterior and posterior crura of the stapes. You can see these little tiny dots of increased density. As Rick Wiggins likes to say, this patient looks like they have sprinkles on their ice cream cone. Now granted, this isn't the ice cream cone, it's just part of the ossicular chain, but the same process applies. Now let's look at the long process of the incus transitioning into the lenticular process. You can see it's too dense, it's thickened, it's a bit smudgy, and surrounding it there may be just a little bit of inflammatory soft tissue as well. And then as we look at the tendons, so here we can see where the tensor tympani tendon attaches to the uh, neck of the malleus, you can see that's also too thick and too dense. So don't just take my word for it. In this case, we have a comparison on the contralateral side, an internal control. So as we look at our abnormal right side and our normal left side, you can see these findings, which are in and of themselves a bit subtle, but they put together a uniform diagnosis here. So. Let's look at the mastoid. Compare side to side. You can see on the patient's right just how sclerotic and dense this mastoid is compared to the contralateral side where it's very pneumatized. We can see a very pneumatized mastoid, lots of septi. All of that's been replaced by sclerotic bone on the contralateral side, on the abnormal right side. Now let's look at the ossicular chain. Take a look at the stapes. You can see just how much density we have in the anterior cruise, the posterior cruise of the stapes. On the other side, nice and smooth. In fact, portions of the anterior are almost imperceptible. That's the normal, unadulterated state of the stapes. It should be just barely perceptible, thin, sharp, and faint. Let's take a look at the uh, long process of the incus transitioning into the lenticular process. You can see just how thick and irregular the right side is compared to the nice, thin, linear left side. And then as we look at the, um, the malleus, the long body, the, uh, the long process, uh, or the neck of the malleus, as we have the attachment site of the tensor tympani tendon. You can see just how thickened the bone is, and look how thick the uh, tendon is itself. 
compared to the contralateral side, yes, you can see it. You can always see this tendon, but it's nice and thin on the normal left side. So again, to summarize the findings, an under, under pneumatized and sclerotic right mastoid, increased density and thickening along the acicular chain, kind of a studded appearance of that density, some calcific density, and then you can also see thickening and increased density of the tensor tympani tendon. So what does this patient have? This patient has chronic otomastoiditis with tympanosclerosis on the right. So what is tympanosclerosis? You can really sort of drill down and get very specific and granular and break it up into different, uh, different sort of flavors of that pathology, but I tend to be a lumper and not a splitter. To me, I lump all of that in, at least the imaging manifestations of it, under just the broad category of this is post-inflammatory ossicular fixation. And this is due to chronic, usually separative, but chronic otomastoiditis that has affected the ear, it gets inflamed, it acquiesces, it gets inflamed again, it acquiesces, sort of this repetitive process. Less commonly, you can see this in the setting of trauma as well. Much less commonly, but trauma can be a setup for developing uh, tympanosclerosis. And it sort of comes in three subtypes. It can be calcific, it can be true osseous with neo-osteogenesis, or it can be a fibrous fixation, which is a little harder to see on imaging. Um, the calcification really is, is something that we can see nicely on CT, but you can see that fibrous fixation as well, where all of these structures do look thickened. Uh, they just don't have quite the density that you would see with CT. And this is thought to perhaps be part of a faulty healing process um, uh, or a healing response from repeated inflammatory events that occur in the middle ear and mastoid. And it's thought that chronic inflammation leads to a hypoxic environment, which causes free radicals to be developed, and that causes local tissue injury to the middle ear and mastoid. As part of the reparative process, you get hyaline degeneration and calcification and eventual tissue sclerosis. But really, the key CT finding with tympanosclerosis is to look for increased density foci in the middle ear mastoid, as well as you may see inflammatory debris. And where does this specifically affect the middle ear and mastoid? Well, think about sound conduction pathway. Those are the structures that are involved. So it can involve the tympanic membrane. That name tympanosclerosis may suggest to, to someone that, that it preferentially involves the tympanic membrane. Well, it certainly can, but it doesn't always. If it involves just the tympanic membrane, we call it moringosclerosis. That's sort of a subtype. But much more commonly, I see it involve the ossicles, can involve the stapes foot plate, frequently see it involve the muscle tendons, like in this case. Another great place to look would be the ossicular suspensory ligaments, uh, sort of the marionette strings that hold up the ossicular chain. That's a great place to look for tympanosclerosis as well. And then it can also involve the mastoid air cells uh, uh, with increased density. So here's a nice article that is uh, worth taking a look at. Uh, this is from the European Journal of Radiology. It was published, uh, I believe, in 2019. And uh, this is a nice pictorial review of conductive hearing loss in patients with a, with a dry middle ear. And one of the things sort of in that uh, paper that's discussed nicely is tympanosclerosis. So for the residents and fellows, really nice paper worth taking a look at. Okay, so let's wrap this up. This again was a patient with chronic otomastoidosis, uh, otomastoiditis with tympanosclerosis. And the key imaging features you want to look for are increased density of the middle ear contents, as well as the tympanic membrane in some cases, specifically calling your eyes to look at the ossicles, the stapes foot plate, the, the uh, tendons, either the stapedius or the tensor tympani, as well as the ossicular suspensory ligaments. Now this density will oftentimes have a studded appearance to it, so-called sprinkles on the ice cream cone uh, that I learned from Rick Wiggins. Uh, which is a really nice thing to look for on the axial CT imaging uh, when you're imaging through the head of the malleus and the body in short process of the incus. So look for those sprinkles on your ice cream cone. And this is a spectrum uh, disorder. It can be quite subtle, and I would, I would uh, include this case as part of the subtle end of the spectrum, all the way to florid, florid disease in which you have amorphous calcification and sort of fluffy density surrounding the ossicular chain. Those are, those are lesions that you definitely won't miss, but keep in mind, it can be very, very subtle, and, and this case was, uh, was selected because, uh, to share with you because I thought it was a, a nice example of what to look for in some of the more uh, subtle cases. All right, there are a couple pitfalls. So in a patient who has conductive hearing loss, uh, 
again, I'm going to stress, if a patient has conductive hearing loss and it's incumbent upon you to figure that out before looking at the exam, you need to dig into the medical record uh, and find out whether the patient is being imaged for conductive versus sensory neural versus mixed hearing loss. But if there is a component of conductive hearing loss, and if you see the stapes, and for that matter, the tympanic membrane, just a little too well, think about tympanosclerosis. These should be very subtle, almost imperceptible structures. Yes, you will see them. You'll see them nicely and cleanly, but if they look too thick, too dense, be thinking about tympanosclerosis. As I said, they should be perceptible, but not as thick and dense as the other ossicles. And then lastly, to stress the point, tympanosclerosis can be easily overlooked. So whenever you have other findings of chronic otomastoiditis, like a, an under pneumatized and sclerotic mastoid, that should cause you to really, really dial up your sensitivity for looking for tympanosclerosis on temporal bone CT. The findings may be subtle, but it's a diagnosis that you can absolutely make on imaging as long as you're taking the time to look for it. So as always, thank you for joining in to IU Radiology Case of the Day. This is Hickman Bridge out at Capitol Reef National Park. I don't know, for some reason, it kind of reminded me of tympanosclerosis. But um, as always, you can follow along on Twitter at N.A. Kuntz, and I would invite you to check out the complete collection of IU Radiology Case of the Day at radtf.iuhealth.org slash COTD. Thanks so much.